What's going on you guys? I'm trying to get out a video this week. Things are crazy with finals and stuff, but I thought, you know, let's try to stay consistent because that's something I'm not really good at. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna teach you how to uh, fake patina paint uh, anything really. Um, like two weeks ago or so, we had a live stream and we showed off the compressor that my dad painted. It was bright blue and it was like a eyesore to the whole garage. So he uh, painted it and it came out pretty cool. So uh, today we're gonna uh, paint one of his bikes. Uh, we'll have him tell you all about it because that's what he likes to talk about. Bikes, 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 and then cars. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to say that everything that we teach you today can be applied to a car. So uh, if you don't have a bike, don't worry about it. So let's go find him. All right, so if you don't know, this is my dad. He's on the channel like every other video. So if you don't know. <laughs> I'm Aaron. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyways, so uh, let's just tell them what we're going to be doing today. All right, well, a lot of people are interested in like the faux patina look that we were showing on the last video. We don't have a car right now to try anything on. And I actually prefer it to be real old, you know, weathered, not fake patina. But if uh, you want to make something look old and it's not old, this is kind of how you do it. So we're gonna start with this bike here. I've had the frame for a super long time. Someone sandblasted it and painted it cool yellow, whatever, Schwinn color with the spray can back 20 years ago. So I've played with this thing and put all kinds of parts on all the time and I don't know how I'm gonna build it, but anyway. So I bought this bike over here uh, about three years ago and it came out of Pacific Northwest and it sat outside probably for 35 years or something just in the rain and I don't know. I, I bought it off of Craigslist. My friend Tim saw it in New Zealand and he said, you should build a bad news bike. Anyway, I, I thought about that and then I thought, well, I don't really want to do it to this bike because it's a crate and they're from the 70s. So I wanted to do something, a bike from the 60s. And I like three speeds and that's a three speed Stingray. This area here on this car, my dad painted it in 1971 and I don't know why he painted it yellow. I don't know if I ever got an uh, answer out of him. Not sure what kind of brand paint it was, but it was pretty much solid, but you could see he just sprayed it just to protect it. Like, you know, it wasn't really even. And the body sat outside for probably 30 years or more since like 71 to when it came here in the late 90s or 2000s. That's how you get real patina. <laughs> yeah, so this bike and bad news, all this patina, that's all real. You know, like right there. So first thing we got to do, I guess, is we're going to strip this bike down just to the frame. Yeah, but this thing is, it's barely even put together. Like everything is yeah. just about a it's just small up. part. <laughs> yeah. That's, you can't really steer the bike like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, time lapse made your job look pretty easy, huh? Yeah, I wish I worked that fast. <laughs> uh, well, the next step would be to sand whatever you're working on. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted you to tell everyone what we're going to be using. So, um, yeah, let's start off on the left side of the workbench. All right, so one of the first things that we're going to use off and on during the project is some paint thinner, which takes off the paint. I'm going to clean some of the parts or the frame with glass cleaner and then also prep all you can use before you paint to make sure that the surface is completely clean so that the paint sticks. Is that some vintage paint over there? Yeah. We're not going to use this, but this is like if, if you were a kid and you were going to paint a bike back in the day, this was what Schwinn offered, one of the colors. Schwinn's were uh, painted red oxide primer, but when you're working on a car or whatever, red oxide primer was popular to leave a hot rod in. So whatever color you were working on with your car, you would pick out your color, your main color that was gonna be. This is actually, on some of the parts of Bad News when I touched it up, I used this inverted striping paint, but the color <laughs> was uh, most similar to the, the color on the car. My dad painted either safety yellow or school bus yellow. I've used this color before, and then I found this one that looked pretty similar. And then the red, you would wanna use like, when you're doing the patina thing, like some other colors underneath. We'll spray a couple of little patches and stuff, so when you sand through, the other color will show through the top color. I'm gonna simulate some uh, probably rust with this color. Probably have a little bit of black in there too, like in areas where you want it darker, like in crevices and stuff. And then in the end, we might use this, which is matte clear coat. And we're just doing it with spray paints because the bike is little. Like if you have something that you're working on and it already has part of it as patinaed, you kind of want to pick the, the colors that are underneath there that are showing. On Bad News, you know, you could see there's brown showing through. There's kind of like a greenish 
Some areas are like a little bit red in it. You look at your subject or whatever you're using and then you you take the colors already on it and just yeah. take it from there. Anyone could go to the store, pick their can, and it's relatively cheap. You don't even need to work on a car. It could just be like a small, like a, a toolbox or something you can practice that with, so. And I would actually suggest trying it before you went on your car, if you've never done something like this, I wouldn't just like start sanding on your car and start spray painting. I would test it on somewhere. You know, if you spray something, it could react with the other paint. In this case, I don't care because I'm trying to make it look old. So I'm not going to pay attention to that. If something reacts, then we'll either uh, sand that off or we'll use that in the, to make it look like it's aged. From personal experience, we've had really good luck with Duplicolor spray paint, right? Yeah, I was like, totally going to say that for anything, it dries quick and it goes on good. Like Rust-Oleum and Krylon just used to be my favorite. I think because of the regulations, if you use Rust-Oleum, it takes a long time to dry. It's weird. Sometimes it even still feels kind of sticky. Then why are you using it? <laughs> um, because I had it left over and I like the color and I'm hoping that it'll work. And it's important to note that you'd probably want to use the same company. Well, if it, like if it's your first time. If you yeah. know the, how the paints react in your experience, then you can do whatever you want. But if you want to be safe and it's your first time, it's smart just to stick with the same paint. Yeah, totally. You'll have less problems. Yeah, so I'm gonna use some emery cloth. It's actually like a cloth that is good for sanding metal. It lasts longer. With emery cloth, a lot of times I use that when you wanna take something down to metal when there's a lot of rust or something. If you have some paint that you don't really wanna take all of it off, you could sand it with like 400. Basically, you need to get it sanded and you need to have um, something for the paint that you're putting on top of it to grip onto. In this case, we won't do something like an 80 grit. We'll do something more like a 400 or 220 or something just to get enough for the paint to grip onto it. I'm basically just going to scuff the paint down because I don't want to take it all the way off because I want to use it as a base color. So basically we're just going to scuff everything up and because this is like a patina thing, I don't care if the paint sticks everywhere perfectly. So like I probably like areas like here, I might not go in there and sand it really good. So I just finished uh, scuffing up the whole frame so the paint will stick. So now we're gonna um, blow it off at the compressor. Now that the frame is basically ready to paint, we're gonna take it outside and hang it up and clean it with prep ball and then paint it. All right, so I'm gonna spray this sucker down. Make sure to get all the areas so the paint will stick. This guy never wears masks, but I'm starting to make them. I don't want him to die. I have the painting mask on, so hope you can understand me. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the frame red oxide primer because Schwinn's came with a base coat of red oxide. And the reason we're doing that is because once we get the other layers on top, I want this color to show through. So we're gonna spray it lightly from side to side, uh, just slowly so you don't get a bunch of runs. So we're gonna get this side, get underneath. So now I'm gonna wait about 20 minutes and um, let this dry a bit. Okay, so now we're gonna put down some flat black paint because on uh, the Model T, bad news, they were painted black when they came out of the factory. They only offered them in black. Any color you want, you get black. <laughs> also to remember like when you're painting, whether it's a car or whatever it is, you wanna think about how the, how the, the, where it is in the weather and stuff. So in this, we're gonna think it's like parked like a bike with its kickstand so the water and stuff would be falling from the top so the paint will be thinner in those areas and in areas where like in here where the water collected it might rust more but anyway so let's put on some black paint so on the sides probably the paint would would last longer um in the weather than on the top and those other areas so let's get it good on the sides like that so like areas like in here you know that would probably not get affected by the weather so we'll get that pretty dark you always want to keep when you're painting you want to try and do uh, smooth you know long passes you want to like start before the part and then go and then you know try and keep it to the end 
So, because if you don't, you'll have like a stop and start mark. See like that? Like it'll be thicker there. You know, I let this paint dry like 20 minutes and now I'm going to put on some dark brown color. This color, it's going to act as like, you know, some like darker rust areas. I'm going to spray this in areas that are like, you know, where, where the water would collect or whatever, you know. So hopefully when we take off some of the other paint, this will show through. All right, so like around this break, um, that's where the break goes and there's, you know, those little crevices there where the water could collect and, um, you know, like around this thing where the kickstand goes. You know, I think on the top of the bars, there would be like, you know, probably like stuff showing through. So a lot of times, like where the welds are and stuff, you'll see rust or like in there. Or like if you're doing a car, obviously, you know, it's going to be different areas. But you just got to think about like, you know, where everything might collect. Or, if, you know, if there was a leaf on it or something where it would collect some more water. Or where something rubbed on it or, you know, whatever. All right, once again, I let the paint dry like about 20 minutes. First, we're going to put on some of this inverted <laughs> yellow striping paint, which is uh, really close to what the bad news was really painted by my dad. So let's put some of this on. It's kind of weird. You have to hold it upside down. So I'm just going to put some on. Like on purpose, I'm putting it on thicker in areas, you know, it's not as smooth. So now I'm going to use another color, a duplicolor color that I found that was pretty similar to the car. <laughs> see here, like we're starting to see like, I'm gonna leave it like that where the primer showing through and then we might have some metal showing through in some of the areas once we're done. But anyway, let's get some of this on and see what it looks like. So now it's looking a little bit like the car. So on the bottom, we're gonna get it pretty solid because the weather wouldn't have hit that area. Wow, look at all that. So we'll get some on the down tube. So we're just trying to get like a pretty solid, you know, like base. All right, to clear the can out. All right, so it's the next day now. We brought the bike into the garage. So now, what are you gonna be doing? Uh, well, first we just wanted to look at the, the bike frame and color and everything in front of the car. So we could see like, um, what kind of contrast we want and whatnot, but I wanted to sand through some of the paint to see what the uh, underlying color looks like and to see if we could um, get different areas uh, to look more worn. So like you know, when you think about it when you're walking against something whether it's a car or whatever it is, you know the things that are more on the outside are going to get you know run into things and you know get chipped up. So like let's say like right here, you know if we start sanding through it a little bit, as you can see the other colors are coming through. That wasn't sanded, but that came out cool from the painting. And then the top bar I'm sanding through because I want more color to come on, through on that because like a lot of times when you see a bicycle, like the top parts of the paint are worn off. Whereas like the bottom, you know, is usually like real nice, depending how the frame's laying or whatever. But I'm, I'm just, like I said, assuming that this thing was parked somewhere and standing up straight, kind of like how the body was. So I'm going to take this uh, sponge and I'm going to dip it into some paint thinner. So the sponge has a texture on it. So you can kind of like, see, it'll take off some of the paint and leave other stuff. This is a brown color. I'm going to spray it onto this plate so I could use it with a toothbrush. And uh, so I'll put some paint on there and then uh, you can go in areas where it's, you know, like that, that you can't get it to. So like areas like this where the water would get in. All right, so I'm gonna use a red oxide primer, different uh, color, I think. Oh, there it comes. So also I was thinking about taking a, a big paintbrush and trying that with some paint thinner. So that's kind of bringing stuff, the colors together. See how that's getting the, moving the paint that I had on the outside away and leaving it just in the in the crevice all right so it's cool you can see areas like here where i wanted the serial number to show so i was kind of roughing that up a little bit more but using the brush if you leave the thinner on there longer and then start messing with it like here you can see it's kind of down to metal and um where the axle would go on the back you know that would scrape off the paint so that's pretty cool and then areas like this starting to like look pretty cool but um i was gonna 
this is another color yellow that I bought, but I was going to kind of like spray on some, some more to get more texture. Like, uh, like when the car was spray painted, bad news was spray painted. It was kind of like just everywhere. You know, it wasn't like a, a nice pattern or anything. So let's see what this looks like just to put on some, you know, like sp spotty looking stuff. And then the other thing I was going to say too, is if you hold, it on, on a spray can, I don't know how to exactly explain how to do this, but if you kind of hold it and let the paint build up on the tip, it comes out kind of like splattery, which, see? Which that works pretty good, you know, to make it look old. So now basically we're going over stuff that we, you know, we'll, we'll, you know I'm probably going to go through again and do this. I'm going to get some of the brown paint again, or the red oxide, and see if we could, you know, use that same technique with um, having it build up on the nozzle. So that seems to be, that's working pretty good. All right, so it's been about a week since we last filmed. My dad's been working on the bike like every day and doing little small things to it, and I just figured that it would just be way too long of a video to include all that. So we'll go talk to him in a second and go over all his small techniques that he used and I don't know, let's go talk to him. All right, before we get started, let's take that rag off and actually maybe show him because it's kind of cool. It was like a perfect shirt, but now it's like... It's uh, all the colors with of bad news on it. It's a, a patina shirt now. <laughs> <laughs> Club shirt. Yeah. Anyways, he's been working on this for quite a while. My mom has been getting mad at him because he goes out every night and works on it for a little bit. But I think he's pretty happy with it now. So I guess it won't be in this video, but you'll put it back together and maybe we'll show it later down the road. But yeah, so what little things did you use or little techniques did you use to get to this point? Well, first I would say that I ended up doing some things like twice on accident. Like one time I had it pretty much how I liked it and then I just had some problems with the way the paint was drying. So I redid it. This is a frisket, which is a mask. I made some holes in it so you could hold it like this and then spray. So like an area like this, you know, that was something like, like that. And then I also used it so I would mask it like this and then spray like that, just loosely. And I did that with all the different colors. As you can see on this, I did a bunch of spray paint onto here and then used some brush like techniques. Like if you look way inside areas like this, you know, I brushed in there. This is like just some thinner in a can. So I would like put the brush and thin out the paint so it was thinner so it would move. I used the sponge like I had talked about, you know, in different areas. And I used uh, this big brush in some areas too. And then uh, this was some H2O, some water. <laughs> Instead of like having the hose here or whatever, I would just spray it on here and then use the wet or dry sandpaper. Even like the 400 and 600, like on the final stuff I did, it was too coarse and it was taking off too much. So I went to like th this 1500 paper, which is more like for color sanding a car uh, or the paint job, the final paint job. And there's some areas on it where, you know, you can see I kind of built up the paint so there's like a texture, so it's not smooth. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it looks, I think, pretty authentic. My dad was over the other day and I joked with him. I showed him the frame. I said, hey, do you remember painting this when you painted Bad News, when you painted the body? He kind of looked a little bit odd and then he's like, yeah, I remember doing that. So it fooled him, but we told him right away, like he didn't really do it. <laughs> <laughs> so any last tips that someone should remember? Um, I guess just, it's like kind of like you gotta be patient. You can probably do it all in one sitting fast, but it's kind of cool if you have the time, if you're doing something like aging it for a movie or something like that, that you have to get done a certain amount of time. But it was cool to like let things dry and then look at it the next day. And then also I noticed that it looks pretty, pretty real. Close. Yeah. And then this I did, I hit it with like a hammer and stuff because I wanted it to look like when the chain came off. When you're riding a bike in the old days, a lot of times the chain would slip off and it would scratch here, so. Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was pretty long, but it was fun to make. If you guys do any fake patina stuff, send us some pictures. It'd be cool to check that stuff out. But we'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.